Shalom from the holiest place on earth. We are now at the Kotel, the site of Beit HaMikdash, the Holy Temple. Both temples that stood here at this site. It's uh, early in the morning. I have a very, very special and a unique guest. This is Jakob Baruch from uh, Manado, Indonesia. Um, Jakob is going to tell us he's amazing, he's incredible, his phenomenal journey, his discovery about Judaism, and his, and his path to becoming religious. So we look forward to your your journey sharing with us and we appreciate that you are sharing your personal your personal love with us and we really thank you and we welcome you to Israel Baruch Haba and we thank you very very much uh, Shalom uh, my name is Yaakov Baruch uh, I was born in Jakarta Indonesia and uh, I was born into a half Indonesian and half Dutch uh, family and then uh, since I was a kid I don't know anything about Judaism or about Jewish life until my grandmother uh, revealed about uh, her background on time when I was in high school that uh, she, she is Jewish and then from that time I try to find uh, my spiritual life, my spiritual journey to Judaism, and Jacob, can I ask you on, on this point? How old were you when your, your grandmother revealed that uh, that she was Jewish? How, do you remember how old you were? Uh, I was around seventeen on that time. Yeah, seventeen years old. And what religion were you practicing? I was uh, raised in the Christian family. So, uh, but it's uh, like a traditional Christian, so it's not really, uh, not really religious, but like uh, I know that uh, my family is uh, half Indonesian, half Dutch, and they practice some Christian, the other part of family practice Catholic, and some is not even go to church. Was your father a Christian? Uh, yes, my father is Christian. And your grandfather? Yeah, my grandfather as well. Did you have any Muslim roots in your family? I have uh, from my mother's side. Uh, my, my grandfather from my mother's side was Muslim. And your family chose to be to follow more the Christian route? Uh, yeah, mostly. So I have uh, like a complete uh, background for sure. Some Christian, some Muslim. And also that after I find out that I have a Jewish background as well. And what, what uh, was the impetus? What why did your grandmother mention to you that she was Jewish? Okay, uh, on the time we were uh, arguing about the Bible, about a story about uh, Moshe Rabbeinu after he said Mitzrayim, and then suddenly uh, she was uh, yelling on me, she said, uh, shut up, because I'm Jewish. So it, uh, it makes me very shocked, and I said from that time, like, what, are you Jewish? And she said, yes, so I said, I don't believe it. Give me some proof, some evidence. And then she went to her bedroom and she out with uh, some uh, paper. And then she showed it to me, you see, I have a paper that explained that uh, my family is Jewish. Did you do any Jewish customs until that time? Did you light candles or... Did no. you ever tell you anything growing up, anything about... Judaism or anything before that time? I'm um, sorry. Like we got this here. This the concept. Yeah. So uh, there is uh, nothing, anything about uh, Judaism in my family uh, that they still practice. <coughs> sorry. Like we got this here. A double blessing. Yeah, thank you. So yeah, it's uh, like a. Uh, I don't know anything, uh, not even one of my family practice any Jewish uh, tradition. Were there any Jewish friends at school or did you know any Jews? Have you ever met a Jew before? Well, uh, I know some, some Jewish people but uh, I, I don't have any idea if I'm a part of them. And one thing that I know that uh, my grand uncle, the brother of my grandmother, 
he was living in Israel for like a few years, seven, eight years. And then uh, after my grandmother revealed about uh, her background, I, uh, I went to him and asking, and then he said, yes, uh, we are Jewish family. So for the first time he gave me kippah and then talit, and then also some uh, Jewish stuff. And then he started to teach me to sing like Hafanagila, everything. And then they start to say like, this is a, their father like to sing this Hafanagila, and they like to sing other Jewish song. Then the parents used to like to make halal on Shabbat. Everything is revealed after that, that I didn't know anything before. When you first found out that your grandmother was Jewish, um, were you, how was your reaction? Were you happy about it? Were you upset about it? It must have come as a tremendous shock. It definitely, uh, I'm not upset, but I was very shocked. Because it's like something, uh, a, a privilege, you know, like uh, something, what? Wow, I mean, I, I'm, I'm the very big shock, you know, that I... And um, did you ever ask your mother how come she didn't mention anything to you or why did she hide it away, possibly? The fact is, my mother even didn't know before. She didn't know either? She didn't know either. Because my grandmother never talked anything about that. Later, my grandmother told me that her parents forbid her, forbid uh, 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 their kids to talk about Judaism, talk about Jewish uh, to other people. Because uh, on the time, Jews were killed by the, by the Japanese in Indonesia during World War II. So the Jews and people, they, they're afraid. They feel uncomfortable to talk to anybody. Why? Did they, were they targeted by the Japanese? Yeah, so the Japanese, they collaborated with the Nazi and then they captured the Jews in uh, Far East Asia. They put in the camp and some may uh, be executed. Really? Yeah. Just, just for being Jews? Just for being Jews. Because they make uh, the, the emperor of the uh, Dipon or Japanese, they're working together with Nazi to, to run after the Jews in Far, uh, Far East Asia. I know, and because uh, the two brother of my grandmother was killed in the by the Japanese, there was a kidnap, and the other uh, not only the Jews but the Dutch people as well. And Jacob, can I ask, um, do you have any brothers or sisters? No, I'm the only kids in my family. Okay, now when your grandmother told you, was she very happy to tell you? Uh, Did she feel a big burden had been released? Look like she very, uh, uh, I don't know, I don't have to say like a regret or something, but like, like suddenly she revealed uh, some big secret. And then she feel uh, like uh, upset with that because like uh, she broke the, what her parents did uh, and keep for many, many times. How did your mother react when she found out that she was Jewish? She must have also been in, in shock. Uh... Well, after after my grandmother told that, I discussed with my mother for sure. And I tell my mother, you know what? Let's we start to uh, step by step. So after that, uh, my mother lit a sharp scandal. Really? At my home, yeah. Until uh, she's very dying, she's like a little sharp scandal. For me, one thing that I'm, I feel uh, comfortable just before my mother passed away, I'm leading her to recite the Shema Israel, and then that's it. So, and can I ask, how did your, how did your father react? Then? Well, uh, my father is an open-minded person, you know. He's a Christian, is like other Indonesian, but uh, well, uh, there is some document showing by the relative, uh, not relative, friends of my father's family, it is said that my father has a Jewish blood as well, because his uh, great-grandfather was a German Jew who came to Manado. But as you, as you know, that we need, uh, we're not allowed to force people to, 
to do the what they want to do. So it's uh, like three wheel. I never asked my father to also keep uh, to do it all of these uh, things. You know. And was your father was he um, was he pleased or did he say it's fun? Um, uh, he's feel very proud with that. Tells. Uh, Many people that it's a part of the Jewish people as well because and he's uh, proud. He's proud. He's be proud, but uh, I can see that he don't have any interest to to do the what you say like malchufa or to do the the mitzvah. So yeah, I don't I don't force him. Yeah, sometimes came to the Beit Knesset uh, for the chagim uh, for the some different, but uh, yeah, it's, uh, but it's not really active. And did you discuss it with your grandparents, with your, uh, in your, with your, the grandfather who was Muslim? Did you ever discuss it with him? No, he uh, passed away many, many years ago. But you had met him. I met him, but uh, I was uh, very small at that time. And at this time, were you living still in Jakarta, or had you moved to Manado? Now I'm living in Manado for sure. I'm working there and teaching there in university. When, when did you move to Manado? I moved there when I was in junior school. So I was uh, born and raised up in Jakarta and then I moved to Manado around uh, when I was in junior school. And in Manado, I know there's a very large menorah, the Calabrium. It's on the mountain. Um, yeah. is, there, is there a large Christian community in Manado? Uh, Manado is, a, is a, like a, the biggest population of the Christian people in Indonesia. And then uh, the idea of the Ajis Menorah is came when uh, the group of the government, they, were, they, they came here in Israel. They went to Knesset, they saw, ah, it's a nice menorah, big menorah. So they, uh, I met them many years ago, they told me they want to build this uh, big menorah. I said, what are you talking about? But after a few years after, it's, it's happened, they make it, so it's funny, but it, that's a fact. Is that one of the biggest menorahs in the world? In the world, it's like 35 meters to the tall. And growing up in Manata, was there any synagogues or any uh, other Jews living in the area? There's a few Jews living in, uh, in Manado. All the people in town know their family, but uh, the synagogue, the last synagogue in our town, it was bombed by the Japanese. After that, we don't have any synagogue anymore. Okay, now when you found out that, that your grandmother was Jewish, did you know that halakhically, um, according to Jewish law, that meant that, that you were Jewish? That yeah. That runs through the... Yeah, because... Because I, because I hear about uh, this, this halakhic, that's why I try to find more, and then uh, that's what I get it. Okay, now, how did you learn more about Judaism? What was your path? What did you, what did you decide to do when you found out that, well, my grandmother's Jewish, so I'm yeah. Jewish? How did your friends react? Did you tell your friends? I, uh, after my grandmother revealed about her background, uh, she start to say something about Judaism step by step, and then uh, she asked me to make a, to open a synagogue if I can make it. And then from step by step, I start first. I went to Singapore to learn to the Rabbi Mordechai Abergel. He's a very nice Rabbi, Sadiq. And from that time, I learned in Singapore, and then I have chance. Uh, I came to Israel in 2019 and after until 2014 i always came to israel to learn and it's it's really helpful i mean and then, okay so how long did you stay in singapore every time i go there i went like uh, for two weeks a week something like that and where did you stay did you stay with the rabbi no i stay in the hotel but uh, i met them every day and the Shari. rabbi the rabbi was very helpful very, very helpful. He's a very kind uh, person. And did you spend sh uh, Shabbat in Singapore as well? Yeah, I spend Shabbat and Hagim sometimes in Singapore. But uh, yeah, I enjoy it because uh, we meet a lot of uh, new faces from over the world.
when my wife and I were very privileged to be in Jakarta for the World Stamp Exhibition, en route we, we spent a Shabbat in Singapore, yeah. and we met the rabbi that he's speaking about, and we spent Shabbat dinner and Shabbat lunch yeah. in, the, in the synagogue, which was incredible. Yes. The community is very warm and inviting, and um, right. did you find they, they accepted you with open arms, the, the community? Yeah. The, some people accept, some people not. I can see that uh, perhaps for some people I'm not enough white, so some people like uh, keep many questions asking to me, and then after I explain, they feel okay, uh, you're part of us. And the rabbi was very helpful. The rabbi very, very helpful. He always want to listen what I want to discuss with him, and he always give me how to, to practice, you know, always uh, like uh, guiding me. And can I ask, when you, how old were you when you first came to Israel on your first visit? I was in, I don't know for sure, but it was in 2009. And you came here to Yerushalayim, to Jerusalem? Yeah, I came with El Al, and then uh, first to Tel Aviv, and then Yerushalayim, and then uh, Tel Aviv again, and yeah. And what was your impression when you came to Israel? Did you feel a tremendous connection? Unbelievable, to unbelievable. It's, I cannot uh, describe it the word. It's really fantastic you know, to be here. I mean, uh, they said if a Jew came here, is this is not uh, the first coming, but it's uh, like uh, it's, uh, uh, it's like returning home. Yeah, right? it's like a comeback again. And was it difficult being an Indonesian citizen coming to Israel? Uh, not really, because uh, we have a good uh, trade record as an uh, Indonesian pilgrimage here, as a tourist. So the security, all the office, they, they're working very professional, really nice. And Jacob can ask, when you found out that you were Jewish, yes. did you immediately feel a connection with Israel? Yeah. Before I know that I'm Jewish, I already became a supporter of Israel. Even before? Even before. Since I was a kid, I always uh, draw the flag of Israel, Magen David. I love everything about Israel. So I'm not even feeling... Even before you even heard anything about your grandmother? Exactly. Even before. So I mean, it's like already in my blood. It's amazing. Yeah, what a shame. And when you came to Israel, did you... Did you study more? Did you learn more? Yeah, every time I come to Israel, I, I, uh, I try to have like two, three nights. I went to Yeshiva at night, to my friend Yeshiva, learn something new that... Uh, in Jerusalem? And Yeshiva? I went to Mesharim. There's a lot of Yeshiva. I met my friend there. He, he gave me all the lessons, so I studied together with them. I enjoy it very much. Now... Because your grandmother was Jewish, and, then, and your mother's Jewish, that meant that you were Jewish, you didn't have to go through any conversion process or anything like that? Of course. Uh, I just need to, to do the Bar Shufa. And what made you want to become more religious, to, to observe more of the mitzvah, to, keep, to become okay. more religious? What, what was the incentive? Because I want to observe what God wants for us. He, he called us to become his uh, chosen people. So he chosen for what? Chosen to, to observe the law, not to uh, against the law. And becoming more observant, it's been a, it must be a very incredible journey that you've been through. You right. must have asked many it, questions. and Exactly. Uh, it's not easy for me. Little, but I enjoy it because I know uh, this is uh, my life, I should uh, do it, you know. I cannot uh, run from this. And looking back, do you have any regrets or is there anything you would have done differently? Uh, no, both Hashem, I enjoy my life now, nothing wrong. Uh, yeah. Now, Jakob, I just want to mention to our listeners out there that when I met you, when I first, I didn't even know when I went to Indonesia that there were any Jews in Indonesia. It's yeah. the largest Muslim country on earth. And only when I came back and uh, I had written a few articles about our visit, 
somebody mentioned, you know, that there are there are Jews living in Indonesia, and they gave me your contact details. And I remember writing to you, and I asked you, is there anything you need? And it was before Sukkot, and he said, I, I would yeah. I've never seen an etrog. But you remember we sent an etrog, and I yeah. think it came straight off the day after Sukkot had ended. Yeah. And now, subsequently, we are doing the etrog on time, and now you right. planted your own etrog. Yeah, I tried to do the my, my the garden of etrog. Also, I tried to do everything, the hadas. Uh, everything. So on the Sukkot we have uh, Arba Minin uh, Peshel. Wow. And Yaakov, one of the most amazing things that our, our listeners and our viewers will, I want them to appreciate, and the tremendous difficulty, I think you rebuilt uh, the synagogue if your grandmother wanted you to rebuild. Yeah. Uh, well, Hashem, I can do that because I really, I really, really want to have a nice uh, synagogue, you know. And I know it's not easy, so I try my best. Where did you build the synagogue? Uh, it was a house by my grand uncle, and it's paid by the that family. And it's you, you have a it's a proper synagogue. Yes, it's proper synagogue. No, it's orthodox, orthodox synagogue. Orthodox, it's a. For the certain scene, uh, for the mail, uh, everything is. Uh, Do you have a site in Torah? Yes, I have. It's kosher, it's from uh, Yerushalayim. Subsequently, I've seen there's been quite a few interviews. Um, people, journalists that have come to Indonesia, they, they know that there's a very special man living in Manada and they've right. interviewed you. Um, have you had very, uh, you've had very important guests, or well, not any important, but you've had a lot of, have you had a lot of Israelis or Jews or tourists coming to your synagogue and asking yeah. you about Judaism? Yeah. Yeah, there is a, like a few months ago, like almost every Shabbat, we have Israeli visitors, Jewish tourists from America and from Europe. So I never feel uh, lonely. And you always make a Shabbat dinner and a Shabbat lunch? I make it Shabbat, uh, Shabbat at my home. Uh, also, uh, but uh, I do, we do the on a Shabbat at the Bet And when it comes to the Kadim, the holidays, yes. you, have, you have Matzah, you have Passover? And so, uh, many years ago we have. Uh, start like uh, recently or before, it's quite difficult now to get a Matzah. And um, Jacob, can I just ask, um, how is the relations now with uh, the local people, knowing that there is a synagogue in Manada? Is it accepted? Uh, yeah, we don't have problem. Even like, uh, like there's a, one a Muslim uh, celebration, we invite them to celebrate in our Beth Knesset. So we, Jews and Muslims uh, in my we place. We have good relations. I, we have very good uh, relations. And you've met the president of Indonesia? Yeah, I met, uh, we not uh, discuss too much, but I'm proud that he's a, he's a very low, low profile guy. And he was, I'm sure he was pleased to meet you, there's pictures of you together. With yeah, person. he's happy, I'm happy. Wonderful. And Jacob, what message can you give to our viewers and our listeners out there? What, what message of... Um, You've gone through an incredible journey, an amazing journey of um, finding out at the age that you were. Yeah. Uh, your journey is remarkable. What advice would you give to our viewers? Um, what, what, what words of encouragement can you give to our viewers? After? Well, my message is uh, keep your faith. Uh, don't feel tired. Uh, keep uh, like uh, always like. Uh, Ner tamid in your heart, this is what Oli said, I'm like an Ner tamid, uh, like a fire, who, like this, and then uh, we can get a more blessing. If we don't do any blessing, we will not get anything. That's the secret of life. And in Indonesia, you walk around with a kippah? Not uh, in all place. It used to before, but now I'm not, because it's not safety. Has there ever been an incident where... Um People saw you with a kippah and yeah, were yeah. angry or... Yeah, it's uh, about four or five years ago, uh, 
when my wife was pregnant, we were walking in the mall, I was wearing a kippa, and then five Arab guys came to me, want to punch me, and ask me to remove all the kippa, because he said, you like a killer. They're very against Israel. Was this in Manhattan? Or Not in, in, in Jakarta. And how did you react? I, uh, because the security came and tried to ask me, separate me from them, so it's nothing happened. Thank God. God was watching every day. God was protecting me. Thank you. Baruch Hashem. Well, Yaakov, we just want to, on behalf of our international businessship, everybody who's watching this video, they must just gain such strength from, from your incredible journey. And Thank we you. all wish you all of Hashem's blessings for you and your family. Thank you, Amen. For your wife, for your daughter, and for your son. Thank you. And please, God, one day may you make Aliyah and permanently here in Israel. I know your heart Sarva is in, in Israel. Right. Wherever you are, if you're in Indonesia, you're doing Hashem's work. You're encouraging people to come closer to Hashem. Um, have you, just before we leave, have you met a lot of Indonesians that feel that maybe they have Jewish blood and that they want to become Jewish or they want to yeah. return to their roots? I know there's a new euphoria now among the Goy is to claim they're a Jew. So for me it's still important that they need to show the paper, like birth certificate or tuba or something. That it's not uh, it's like uh, people can claim whatever they want. But if somebody feels that they are Jewish, you'll help them on, in the journey as well? Yes, but I need to make a research also because I don't want to put in problem. Wonderful. But may you be blessed and your family Thank be you. blessed and may you enjoy the rest of your stay here. And we look forward to your next day in Israel. And, uh, and Bahat Slacha, you must just have the mazel and brocha and all of us are blessings. And I thank you for, we're now going on for 2.30 a.m. in the morning. My pleasure. Here at the Kotel, uh, the pleasure. holiest place on earth. Yes. Uh, all the best for you and your family. Thank you very much. All